Good morning and welcome to an all new Eye of the Tiger. I'm Gigi Pagel. And I'm Kelly Kennedy. Students and families have paid additional fees on online platforms such as GoFan and the Student Store. We go to Will Joseph with more. RHS families using online services encounter many fees when using the school's payment systems. One area where these fees occur is on the online student store. The student store charges technology and convenience fees despite the outdated site. Yeah, it's a little tedious, you know, having to set it all up just to buy something. It's a little annoying. I don't really like the fees on there. I think they're a little unnecessary. I wish they would get rid of them, but I guess I understand why they have them. The manager of the student store, Sarah Karstens, explains why RHS continues to utilize this store regardless of the outdated system. Although that system is somewhat out of date and limited with regards to like graphics and flashy and um, just kind of up to date, it's actually a really good accounting program for all of the other day-to-day -day duties. Um, the accounts receivable and payable and it communicates well with the other programs we already use. Another area of RHS where fees exist is on GoFan, the school's online ticket system for sporting events that was introduced during the COVID-19 pandemic. Activities Director Hank DeMello believes that there is still benefits to GoFan despite the fees. We've noticed this on Friday nights where with both cash and GoFan, the lines that we used to have that were all the way down to the gate, they're not there anymore. It's, it's quicker in, quicker out. Um, it's a convenience thing for some families. It's real easy to do. You can do it at, at home. You come to the game, you go to the gate, show your ticket, two buttons push, and you're in. The bigger events, um, there's still going to be cash, but the, the smaller crowd sizes anticipated uh, will probably just use just GoFan. Some students believe that RHS could utilize more modern services with less fees for events and purchases around RHS. Yeah, I bet there's something out there that's a little better than GoFan. You know, it's got to be a better option some way. Thanks, Will. Senior quotes are due December 1st. Seniors can visit the link provided or scan the QR code to submit their quotes. Spirit Beat kicked off yesterday with Pajama Day. Today's theme is Cowboy Day, tomorrow's theme is Sports Jersey Day, Thursday is Orange and Black Day, and Friday is Red, White, and Blue. And now we go to Addison Mahon with sports. Good morning, and welcome to this Tuesday's edition of VOTSN. I'm Addison Mahon. Last weekend, Roseville's Cross Country participated in the Bret Hart Frogtown Invitational and did not disappoint. Six varsity athletes medaled in the meet. Melissa Peterson, McKenna Tuttle, Grace Williams, Aragon, T. Harina, Boston Tarble, and Quinn Tuttle. We did good. Um, about three of us medaled out of like seven of us. Um, yeah, we did pretty good. Quinn and the rest of the team look to continue this momentum Thursday at the CVC Center meet. Girls Water Polo also had a solid weekend, finishing 2-2 two two in the Girls Sierra Shootout Tournament. Ainsley Stormer led the Tigers with 11 goals, Sarah Ashby led in steals with 9, and Jackie Clauser had 47 saves. Um, I feel really good about our team, and this year we've gotten way better, so really good. Girls Water Polo will look to build on this performance in their game at River City tonight. Last Friday night, Varsity Football won their first league game in the 2023 season. Despite coming in 0-4, Antelope locked up Roseville in the first half, holding the Tigers to only one touchdown, courtesy of senior Joel Bradley, who went 24 yards on a pass from sophomore Mason Sosnara. The Tigers were able to secure the comeback win due to a shutout second half and Aaron Salas' two rushing touchdowns. EOTSN player to watch Rocco Bassinelli also had an interception. The Tigers look to get their second league win during their homecoming game this Friday against Yuba City. Before we go, here's a look at the game action this week. Today, girls golf faces Bella Vista, both girls and boys water polo head to River City, and girls tennis hosts West Park. Tomorrow, girls flag football plays Intercom at home, and on Thursday, girls golf has a match against Intercom. Girls tennis and girls volleyball are away against Yuba City, girls and boys water polo head to Christian Brothers, and as previously mentioned, cross country has their CVC center meet. All boys interested in trying out for basketball this season, please attend a short informational meeting tomorrow in room 915. Current fall athletes are encouraged to attend as well. Top plays are back this Friday. Scan the QR code on the screen or click the link in our Instagram bio to submit your highlights. And that's all in your home for Roseville High School Sports, Top Plays, Breakdowns, and more. I have the Tiger Sports Network, EOTSN. And now we go over to entertainment. Thanks, Addison. Mortal Kombat 1 is dropping today, or five days ago if you chose to pre-order the premium or collector's edition of the game on your platform of choice. Although this name is misleading, this is actually the 12th game in the franchise. 
This confusing name came about because there was a soft reset by Liu Kang, God of Fire, who reset history in an attempt to create a new timeline free of previous hardships. The graphics in-game are stunning, allowing for gory finishers, fluid motion, and natural-looking gameplay. That is, unless you play on the Switch. The poor graphics quality, reminiscent of the PS2, have resulted in silly images like these. Graphics aside, the gameplay has been really refreshed with a new combat mechanic, cameos. Cameos act as a secondary fighter, allowing for players to expand their moveset and experiment with new combos. Mortal Kombat 1 also introduces the new Invasion game mode, a single-player mixture of an RPG and board game, offering mini-games, challenges, and easter eggs from previous games. Mortal Kombat 1 will also have DLCs featuring popular characters such as Omni-Man, Homelander, and Peacemaker. Overall, if you like fighting games, gore, and interesting combo mechanics, then this is probably the game for you. In music news, Drake delayed his album For All the Dogs for another month now, dropping October 6th. Although the single Slime You Out featuring SZA was dropped, it was a flop. But SZA was great as usual. Marvel released a trailer for Loki Season 2, and I have high hopes for this project. Last season is considered one of the best projects to come out of Phase 4, so I'm confident Marvel will deliver. And now we go back to news. Thanks, Joseph. Math teacher Paul Stewart has been a coach and a ref for RHS Athletics for the past few years. We go to Monique Carey with more. Coach and math teacher Paul Stewart has helped a lot in the RHS athletics for the years he has been here and has found an interest of being a water polo ref. Um, let's see here. When I first came to Roseville, I ref for a couple of seasons. Um, then I took over the water polo program. And then, um, you know, it's just been on and off for a long time. Um, but recently, just the past uh, four years, four seasons. He has managed to find a balance between being a teacher and a coach, as well as a water polo ref, despite the challenges. Um, over the past few years, as we're coming out of COVID, a lot of referees retired in uh, water polo. So there's just been so many opportunities. Sometimes it's five days a week. Stu has previously been a coach for water polo, but currently he coaches JV girls' soccer. Done swim, did softball for a couple years, did the water polo program for about 10 or 12 years here, um, did freshman uh, volleyball. So just wherever they needed somebody to plug in, you know, as a teacher, you can also teach the sport. Well, you know, soccer's always been my love and my passion. But um, recently, swim is just, it's really gotten me. I've really just enjoyed the swim. It's very individual. It's up to those people, whether they uh, get it or not. So. so He has managed to find a balance between being a teacher and a coach. Um, well, I was having some problems with some of the parents and some of the students. And I said, you know, I, I, I don't know that I need this anymore. And during that season, a couple of referees were like, why don't you referee, you know, instead of a uh, coach? And I found out a lot easier to referee. It just took me a while to get out of the coach's mode, but then I was able to. Stu has found that doing referee jobs on the side has been a great experience, and there are so many ways people can get involved. Um, I think uh, what'll happen is like, when you guys finish a sport, you don't think about it, but there's still money to be made. Mm -hmm. You know, you see a lot of kids ref little kids soccer, but you could be refing basketball games, volleyball games, and to be honest, water polo, when you finish here in high school, that's a great afternoon, you know, job because it pays. It pays pretty good money. I'm not gonna lie. So. Thanks, Monique. That's it for today on I Have the Tiger. And remember, we're always on IHaveTigerNews.com. See you next time.